Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, part two of our checkerboard build. Well, when we left off last week, for those of you who are only interested in the ABS portion of it, the board was done and we had all of our checkers and boards, etc. all finished up. But today, for the woodworking half of it, we're going to start off the show by milling some half-inch thick walnut. My thought process on the entire board here is that where on earth do you store all of these checkers? And of course the thought came to me inside the board. So I thought why not make a wooden cabinet that would house this board? Now you may be wondering why the split. And the reason for the split is that what I want out of this box is essentially I want the box to be closed like this. And then when you open up the box, you get your checkerboard. I hope that made a little bit of sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rip some three inch wide strips of half inch thick walnut. Well, truth be told, after taking a few measurements, I actually changed the dimensions and made each of those strips two and a half inches wide. So there you go, a little correction notice. So now what you need to do is you need to measure one half of your board and just get an exact measurement of it. I know that before we said that this board was uh, 11 by five and a half, but through gluing, mine is a little smaller than that. So it's no big deal. Um, <clears throat> you will measure your board and add half an inch to the measurement, and that is the size of a box that you need. So if your board is 11 by five and a half, then your box needs to be six by 11 and a half. So what we're gonna use for this box is we're gonna use our Incra iBox jig. You guys don't need another demonstration of it, but what I'm gonna do is cut all the parts to make the box, the dimensions that I just said to you, and then I will come back and see you after all that is done. <laughs> But we've got all the cutting done and now we're just going to do a bit of a test fit here on our box joints and everything so far looks good you know this is the one thing that I really like about this Incra jig is that the last time I used it was for the video on how to set it up on your router table and of course I had to redo all the calibration in order to get it back to the table saw. That all in all took me about 10 minutes of next to no effort. And then I'm to cutting and I'm telling you, it took me one shot on a test piece to get this set up and you get those kind of results. That is just sexy. So what do we do with this now? I'm gonna tell you what we do with it now. What we're gonna do is we're going to glue it together. Now that you've got it all clamped together, just want to go around and make sure that you get all of the squeeze out removed from the box. The other extremely important thing that you want to remember to do at this point is check this box for square. Once I get this corner cleaned up, I'm going to get a square in there and just make sure that we're perfectly 90 degrees. If we're not, this is the only chance you're going to get to fix it.
and we're actually a little bit off so now is the time to get that corrected all right it didn't take much a couple small little wax with a rubber mallet got that right back to square uh, I guess when I was clamping I shifted something off to one side that stuff happens no big deal that's why we check so once you get the squeeze out cleaned up on this just put it aside and let this piece set up well if you followed along you should have something that looks like this and you may be wondering how does this translate into a checkerboard well truth be told we're going to mount these checkerboard sections on the top and the bottom of our box but this to me is unacceptable i don't like that ridge or that just being able to see that edge so what i want to do is i want to recess this whole thing down into the box and for that we need to get a rabbit cut all the way around the edge now i could have done the rabbit prior to assembly but that would have required a stop rabbit on these end pieces just so that we didn't destroy our fantastic finger joints here so i'd rather do this one on the router table so let's head over there so this is the bit that i'm going to be using here in the router table and i have a bearing set on it this will cut a straight slot in the side here as we run the bearings and due to the size of the bearing i'm limiting the cut so that i will get a quarter of an inch wide rabbit all the way around my piece now you don't want to take it all off in one shot you want to sort of nibble away at it so you're the, you're not tearing it out in order to get the height of the bit I use the actual checkerboard itself so that I could just hold it up against the cutting edge right here and get the height reference as to how deep I need this cut to be. Well, you can see what a beautiful job the router does. Nice clean edges with a nice clean rabbet all the way around. And we've left our finger joints completely intact. The only problem is that in the corners we get a round hole. So for that, we're going to get in there with a good sharp chisel and a mallet. We're going to take our time and carefully we're going to chisel out the corners of each one of these uh, rounded, um, routed edges. So before we actually get a chisel over here, we're gonna use a square and a very sharp X-Acto knife here. And we're just going to score the top edges just to make sure that everything lines up nicely. And it'll also help to eliminate any kind of chipping or chip out or tear out that we're gonna get while we're working on chiseling it. And there we have one chiseled out. So carry on and do the other seven and get all corners squared off on both sides of the box. Well, now that you have all your chiseling done and probably have quite a nice little mess of chips around your bench, it's time to test your checkerboard in your dado that you've put in your box. It should be a snug fit, but you don't want it super tight. Check around the outside for gaps and that sort of thing. There really shouldn't be any if you've measured correctly and you were careful. Now, right away, we can see that this here, like you've got that really nice black and white ABS plastic and you've got this really gorgeous finger net or finger jointed walnut box. I like it's 
I, I don't even have the words for it. I just dig it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to glue our checkerboard into our box. Just before we glue our checkerboards in, just give this sharp edge on the inside here. Just a little sanding. You don't want to lose too much of the shape, but yet you don't want it razor sharp like that either. So just a light sanding just to remove that sharp edge. Well, now that your boards are dry, it's time to separate the two pieces of our box. And accuracy counts here. With other boxes that you separate in this method, if one section is a little smaller than the other, you don't really notice it. But with this one, because of the fact that you open it up completely to play the game, if one piece is thicker than the other, well then you can see where one section of the gameplay would be higher than the other. So triple check, do what you can to get this exactly on the money. And I don't anticipate this to be 100% perfect, so you never know. I might be showing you how to correct it if you mess up. But either way, set the blade height to a little more than the thickness of your material, half inch material, we're slightly over half inch. You don't want to be ripping through it like crazy. You just want to sort of break the surface. Either way, let's get her cut. Well, just like I thought, no matter how much I tried, I am slightly above, and I mean just slightly. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our smallest piece, and we're going to line it up with our blade. We're going to bring our fence in just so that we're only taking a skim, and I mean a skim off of this. There we go. We're going to line it up just like that set our feather board and we're going to run this thing through rotating it 90 degrees for each cut and when we get that done we're going to run the other piece through and then at least they'll both be identical. So I now have our playing surface facing down on the table and I'm just putting down the layout marks for some hinges and all I'm going to do is I'm going to mortise these hinges in and then mount them to our box so that uh, we can now have our box hinged on the one side. Well, our last step in this project is to come up with a way to keep it closed. And for that, a couple of quarter inch rare earth magnets that will be sunk in and glued in place on each edge here will do just fine. Um, if you want, you can add more. You can put one on each corner. The only thing I will caution you about is to make sure that you have the polarity of the magnets correct so that they don't uh, repel each other, that they actually attract. And now it's just a matter of a little drop of CA glue. We don't need a lot. In fact, I'm just going to apply it to the magnet instead of squirting it in like I was just going to. So a little bit of CA glue on the magnet. 
push it down inside of our quarter inch hole, just like that. And then we'll take the other one. Same deal, a little bit of CA on the back of the magnet, drop it in the hole and push it down to make sure that it's fully seated. There we go. And now once those magnets are dry and the CA glue has set, that will be our magnetic closure of our board. So then when you're not playing, of course, you just place all your checkers inside your, your area. You can close this up. It'll keep them nice and safe in there. And then once you're ready to play, open up your box, take out all your checkers, and then all you have to do is set up your board just like this. And then you can go ahead and play your game. It's as simple as that. And there you have it, a checker set. Guys, this project has been a lot of fun for me and the fun part here has been the experimentation and the mixture between ABS and wood, which I normally deal with. It's, it's one of those things that it just seems that for this application it was meant to be with the black and white ABS contrasting to that nice dark walnut and those tight finger joints that give the whole thing that that look. I can't even describe it, but if you guys are as passionate about the woodworking as what I am, then you'll know exactly what that look is that I'm talking about. Guys, you've got to give this a try. And if you're interested in the ABS plastics and you want to get yourself some, I'll put the links below to Omicron Plastics you can contact them and I'm sure they'd be more than happy to help you out. Guys, this project is a lot of fun. I hope you're going to try it yourself. I really hope you've enjoyed this short little series and this short little build as much as what I have. Guys, thanks for tuning in and I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video. And now I'm going to go clean my glasses because I can't see a darn thing out of these. Where the heck did all the dust come from? It's not like I was doing anything out here.